Hi there, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to be talking about lines of best fit. And this is a topic which I hope most of us are sort of familiar with. And I'm pretty sure that I was taught it as one of the first things I learned when I first learned mathematics at school. But I, I want to frame it in terms of our population and sample that we've been talking about. So we might hypothesize that there is some relationship between the number of years of education someone has and wages within a population. So we could plot on this space individuals' wages versus their education for all the individuals within our population. And we might hypothesize that there is some positive relationship between these two variables. It's probably not exact, but there is some sort of positive correlation between the two. What we might be interested in, rather than just seeing a scatter plot of our data, is how does education affect, or how does an incremental year of education affect the average weekly wages which an individual would obtain um, for the average person within our sample? So the way in which we, we normally do that is we think about, can we draw a line which fits our data pretty well by eye? So we might draw a line which goes through our data like that. Actually, that's not very good. Let me try that again. So we might fit a line which goes through our data like that. Again, not the straightest line in the world, but you, you get the idea. And this line tells us, if we've done a relatively good job of, of, of drawing it, if someone had 10 years of education, what would we expect their average weekly wage to be? So perhaps we expect their average week average weekly wage to be $500. And then if we increase their education by one year, so now they have 11 years of education, the slope of the line tells us how far we need to walk up if we walk one step along the education axis. So the actual slope of this line, which I'm gonna call B to P, I'm gonna explain that in a minute. So the slope of the line tells us what is the average effect of one more year of education on weekly wages for someone in the population. So perhaps their weekly wages go up by $50, so now they earn $550. And I mentioned before that this slope of the line is given by B to P. Well, that's because we originally spoke about there being some sort of linear relationship between wages and years of education um, within our population. So this is of the form y equals mx plus c, which is the equation of any general straight line uh, in two-dimensional space. So b to p here represents the m in this above relationship. So it represents the gradient of the line. So this is our population process. So in econometrics, we normally don't actually deal with a population data set because it's very rare we actually have entire population data sets. Normally we only have a sample. So perhaps we have maybe 10 of these individuals from the sample. So maybe it's these people which I'm highlighting here. And we could again plot them in two dimensional space of wages against education. But now we have fewer points than we did before because we've only got a sample of our population. So again, here we're considering what is the effect of education on wages? So actually, let me just draw another point up here, just so it's a little bit more, fills out our region a bit more completely. So again, here, normally what we do is we sort of think about, okay, so we've got our sample. Can I draw a line which goes, or is, is as close to the points as possible, um, which we have from the sample? And this would be our, our line of best fit in this case. I'm going to call this um, slope B to S. But implicit when we're actually drawing this line of best fit, what we're actually trying to do is we are trying to come up with an estimate of our population parameter. The goal of this, of course, being that if I told you someone's years of education, let's say I, I said, using your line of best fit from your sample data, can you predict what their wages would be? 
So perhaps using the sample data, we would conclude that using online a best fit, the wage which someone should expect on average from 10 years of education would be $600. And notice that this isn't the same as our estimate if we were to use the full population. And that's because of sampling error, because our sample doesn't fully represent exactly what's going on in the, in the population process. So we've spoken about what we actually are trying to do when we draw a line of best fit, but we haven't spoken about how we should actually go about drawing it. We, we've just sort of done it by eye. And, and that's kind of okay if, you, if it's only sort of two dimensional data. Although it, you could argue that perhaps it's not that objective. So perhaps I could have drawn this line a bit closer to a few more of these points down the bottom there, and perhaps a little bit less steep. That is a sort of subjective thought process which is going on in my head. So perhaps I should have done it like that. But we need an objective way of drawing or, or, or coming up with our estimate of beta, F, well, estimate of beta P, um, which is realized in beta rest. So that's when we have to think about methodologies for drawing a line of best fit. And implicitly, when we're drawing a line of best fit, we're typically talking about estimators. And we're going to discuss how we should draw this line of best fit in the next video. I'll see you then.